okay, it happened. Took a loser today. I lost one R this morning. I'm going to show you that trade. It was on AMD as I trade. As you all know, I trade AMD every day. And I'm going to show you exactly what I was looking for for my entry in AMD. And then I'm just going to walk through the step-by-step -step process on how I manage the trade and what targets I'm looking for. Now you can see on my screen right here, I was setting things up for a short play. You can see I've got a short position right here, 1,200 shares to go short, and this is what I was looking at. I was looking at this candle right here, this last 15 minute candle. You can see I'm on the 15 minute time frame. I was looking for it to break the low of that candle. Now, this candle was a little whippy. It was sort of a doji, and I don't really like that. I like it when a candle either pushes up or pushes down or is just more solid in its formation, not with these gigantic wicks. So I was just thinking, you know, be careful. Let's just see what happens. So I put the order in, and I'm going to press play here. You can see that this candle currently is a nice topping wick and it looks like we're wanting to push down. So I went ahead, got my order placed. Uh, I placed it a um, nickel below the low of that last 15 minute candle. Now we're closing in. Looks like it's wanting to push down. And as it comes in here, it starts to pick up in volume. You can see the volume down here just, just spiked. And then it rests for a quick second. It wasn't a definitive push which also I'm not a big fan of, and then ultimately decides to break down. And if I pause it right there, you can see I quickly got a 700 share fill at 92.61, but you can see in here, it's sort of a delayed fill. So as I press play, I got 900, 985, now I'm at 92.60, and then I get my full fill, there's 986, there's 1,200, so I finally got my 1,200 share fill at 92.61, and then you can see that we press down, and I'm lightly green, just a small green, then immediately go red, and it just sort of hits a wall, and I sort of get that feeling at this point that, you know what, it doesn't look like we're dropping, because these trades typically either happen or they don't. Sometimes they'll sag a little and then move, but this was clearly getting to the point where right here, I'm down $218. My risk unit or R value is $300. So I know that it's going to close in on me here. It's just not looking good. And then there you go. I got stopped out 92.86. I used a 25 cent stop and that's the stop that I take into to every trade. And the reason I use that on every trade is based on my back test that I've done. You always got to go back and back test 50 to 100 times get a good feel for how much the stock moves around and that'll help you pick out what your stop loss should be if you don't wanna use price action structure for your stop. So that stopped me out at uh, a loss of 290.45. So fortunately, um, I didn't take a full R stop and I'm gonna flip over. I wanna actually go to AMD's chart to kinda of show you what actually ended up happening in this trade. And here's the controversy I've had. Here's what I've been sort of kicking around in my head. In that trade, I took this short, right? You can see this little baby wick. That was my trade. I got stopped out on this little baby wick. Now, what I typically like to do is have two orders going, one at the lows, one at the highs. Now, typically, I'll take one trade. If it loses, I go ahead and I, and I call it. I don't take the upper trade. But the more I look at my statistics, I log all my trades in TraderView.com, and that's TraderView with a V-U-E, not V-I-E-W. And it's great for loading up your trades and looking at all of your metrics after a month or a week or a year. And I was looking at things, and it seems to me that if I go back, if I were to manage my old trades with my current trade strategy, which I'm going to show you in just a second, I would be able to replace any additional losses with a longer runner. So what I mean by that is, for example, in October, I had seven specific days where I lost on the downside and then it started to come back up and I took an order above the high and I lost on the upside. And I said, okay, I'm only gonna take one or the other, but not both, because I don't wanna double up on my, on my losses. 
But I went back to October and I tested everything. And it was shocking what I found out. If I would have just taken both ends, if I just decided to do that, take those double losses, on the win days, they would have been much bigger with my new management strategy. And that management strategy is bar by bar playing the lows on a long play. So for example, this broke out. Let's say I would have taken this long play. I would have got triggered in here. It would have run up and then this ultimately closed. Now let's just say for, for example's sake that this wouldn't have stopped me out. Let's say this candle closed, didn't stop me out, and the new one opened. Well, the second that I get two R's of upside movement, and then I get my 2.5, which is my ultimate target, I move my stop loss to 2R. So price action's at 2.5, my stop is at two, and then I just wait. And let's say this candle didn't take me out, it didn't take me out at two R's, let's say this candle didn't take me out, and then this one doesn't take me out. What I do successively is, I would then move my stop loss from 2R to the low of this candle. Then I wait for this candle to play out. If this candle doesn't stop me out, then when it closes, I move my stop to this low here. And then this one. When this one closes, I move my stop to here. And then you can see this next green candle would have stopped me out because it went below the low, it breached that. So let's do, let's do an example. Let's say I wouldn't have been stopped out on this one and let's just see what happens. I'm gonna get a uh, calculator out here and let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this low would have been because this would have been the last time I moved my stop loss. And that low is 95.35. Now stick with me here, 95.35 and I'm gonna subtract where my entry would have been. And my entry would have been, the high here was 93.90. I would have entered a nickel higher, so let's say 93.95. So 93.95, and that gives me a dollar 40. So now I'm gonna divide the dollar 40 because that's the range it would have moved that I would have been in on. I'm gonna divide that by my R multiple, which is my stop loss. So 25 cents. Divide it by 25 cents, what does that do? Gives me 5.6 R. 5.6 R, multiply that by my R value, which is $300. So this trade, if it wouldn't have stopped me out, could have been a 1680 trade, $1,680. So 5.6 R's, I would have replaced the R I lost to the downside and had a net value of 4.6 R's at the end of this trade. If this wouldn't have stopped me out, and what I mean by that is, when this triggered me in, this candle here actually came too far down and would have stopped me out at 2R. So this would have been a winner either way, but my regret, or not regret, but my, my thought is, I need to go ahead and make part of my trading plan go back to taking the low trade, meaning the break below this low, and the high trade. If I lose here, I take the high above here. Let's say I lose on the upside first. Then, as we drop, I take the low. I play the up and the down, and that ensures that I don't miss any of these whale monster trades where they run all day and the lows just keep stair-stepping higher. Because with back testing, I've found a few specifically in uh, November and some in October that went 14R. I could have been along for that whole ride with this strategy. And those big winners can overshadow any double losers I have. You know where I lose on the downside, it creeps up, I lose on the upside. Those days are just gonna happen. But what you're gonna make sure you ensure is that you don't miss the runner, you don't miss the big day. Because for example, today, I, missed, or I got stopped out on this one and I didn't take this one. What if this would have been a 14-hour runner? I can't miss opportunities like that. So I'm changing my trading plan as of today and I'm gonna implement, I'm gonna go back to taking the up and the down, not just one or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement, implement that tomorrow. Today is trade 103. You just saw the review on that. Tomorrow's gonna to be trade 104. Check back with me. This week I was up 5R 
and then I lost just less than one, so I think I lost 0.9. I'm up 4.1 R on the week so far. We'll see where the week goes. This change in strategy has really opened things up for my trading plan because before I was just taking the hard target at 2.5 Rs, and now I've opened it up. I don't have the target anymore, as you can see here. If I back this up, you can see I don't have the target on my order. The target would be down here, wherever I needed it to, to trigger me out. I'm now leaving it open and only carrying a stop loss. And that's so that I can catch slightly larger moves, but being mindful that I've got to move that stop loss quickly to 2R once price action gets to 2.5R. And that way, if it backtracks on me, I've still locked in my 2R and I'm happy with that. But, but on occasion, when you catch a monster or a whale and it wants to keep running, you're still along for the ride. So that's my theory right now. I'm going to move into trade 104 tomorrow with this implementation of my strategy. It's now a hard rule. I won't ignore this. I'll move, I'll move forward with it and implement it. And if you guys are having any trouble with your trading strategies, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you're struggling with. I'd love to help you out. You can email me at takingtrades.com. If you enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And one thing I never mentioned that I would love for you guys to do is just share this video once. Share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, wherever you want to share it on social media. That really helps get the word out. I'm really trying to build the audience and build the reach of the channel because I really think we can change people's day trading one day at a time. And I'm open to answering any questions that you have. So hopefully this trade was helpful. It was a loser, but I lose all the time. It happens. My win rate right now is a little under 53%, and we'll move on. Tomorrow's another day. All right, drop comments below, ask questions, email me, takingtrades.com, uh, sign up for our Facebook group. The link is in the banner of the YouTube channel, and we'll see you tomorrow.